Hey YouTube, my voice is still half asleep because I've been awake for like 15 minutes. It is August the 11th, the summer, the summer, summer, summer. I would normally do something called tea talk with Caroline, but this morning I need my water, so. Water talk with Caroline, can we go water tea, maybe? Tonight, not tonight, last night was a crazy night and I don't know, I hear someone say crazy night and you might imagine like they're out drinking or this, that and the other. No, I was at home writing poetry. <laughs> but I, I, um, I went out to some coffee shops yesterday and I don't know why I thought it was a good idea at all to get two V60 coffees given the fact that I know their caffeine content is generally much higher than your standard Americano. But I was laughing to you, this is fine. It's fine, I haven't got plans tomorrow. Fast forward to 4 a.m. and... <sighs> but it was actually a really productive night. Like in the past, I would just be stuck on my phone. But Adam and I have been talking a lot the last few days about you know spending less time on the internet and more time away from screens. And like the last month or so, I've been picking up journaling again, which I, I kind of, loved doing in the past but stepped away from and in an attempt to move away from screens a little bit I got a paper journal and like the minimalist side of me was a bit like if you do an electronic journal then you don't have to waste paper or this or the other but we had an interesting me and I had a conversation about like friction and how much resistance there is for something so it's been a lot of time I've gone to open my journal on my phone and then it's like oh I've got a message or I've got an email or I've kind of got a lock on my phone and then go into the app and sometimes by the time I get there it's just like gone. And so actually having a journal and a pen and just being able to do it straight away is actually really, really good. <laughs> That's funny, I saw a lot of videos on journaling on the past and people would have like a notepad and paper and part of me was like, oh, you just do it electronically and now I, I actually see the value in this, especially because last night I think it would have destroyed my eyes, even though I was awake, if I was just writing all this on my phone, but instead I wrote all this poetry in my book. And it got me thinking even more so about like how owning less doesn't always equal better. I don't know how to, I'm trying to find the right way to explain it. So like, for years I had the Kindle app on my phone and it was like, okay, now my phone is also a book, yeah, 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 this is great, don't need to find a Kindle. And I like barely read at all, like I really, really struggled to do any reading. But in quarantine a few months ago, we actually bought a Kindle, a paperweight, and I have read so much comparatively. I look so sleepy. I have read so much comparatively and got so much closer to my reading goals and how much I'd like to actually be consuming compared to what was happening when it was on my phone. And so in that instance, it's like there's this, an ama there's this amazing immediate focus that comes from actually having a Kindle and you open it and that's all it is. Well, there's a web browser on it, but the web browser is so crap that like your brain couldn't use it to procrastinate or really do anything else, you just use it as what it is. And so, you know, that's one example of my life being better for something. And so, you know, having this paper journal now, my life was better for some reason. Because last night I wrote, I wrote a crazy amount last night, honestly. It was just like, where the hell is all of this coming from? Uh, it's good though. I think today I'm gonna go get um, a big journal from Tesco and just put like my songs and poems in there because I don't mind necessarily like sharing this, oh, sharing, showing myself, using this book for like multiple things, but I did so much writing last night that I was like, I'm good, this is gonna end up taking over my actual journals, journal kind of feed and posts. Posts, it's not a post coral if it's off the internet. That's how you know the internet's broke me. Like I say, this started because we had last weekend together, as we do these days, because I currently work a uh, weekends off job. <coughs> ah. And you know, when I woke up, Adam was like, 
looking at TED Talks and learning stuff and he loves to learn. His brain's always been like more and more, more in that sense. Um, but I'd noticed recently that he seemed to be feeling a bit overwhelmed and so we kind of said, you know, why don't we try and step away from screens today? And I think because it was just like, okay, it's one day, like people feel like they can do anything for one day, I think. It was like, okay, yeah. So we went out to the park and then we went out to the park again. And then we went and grabbed some food somewhere. And what else did we do? We just like hung out, we played, played top trumps and actually had a really nice day. And it was quite interesting because like the whole day I just had like a headache here. And I honestly think it was because my brain was kind of like, are we not gonna be on screens? Like before lockdown and all that, I was working a lot. And so I was, I still, I'm not gonna say I didn't have any screen time because I did. But comparatively now, if I'm not working much, I'm like basically on my laptop all day every day. Even if I'm being some form of productive, you know, it's still constant screens. Um, and so like on Saturday, actually, I think stepping away from that and not watching any TV or anything as well, my, it was like we had like physical symptoms from it. Uh, so then when Sunday came around, we were like, should we just do this again? And uh, we had a really good long conversation about monkey mind and how like that's the side of you that just wants to like watch TV and do nothing and procrastinate and put things off and not get tasks done. And there's the other side of you that like wants to complete tasks and feel calm because you're all sorted and learn stuff and that and how it's like a constant battle between the two. Like your monkey mind is constantly trying to be like ah like Quite a good way to describe it is how Adam and I always say that there's this side of me called Sleepy Coral and how like her goal is both to elude sleep and sleep as long as possible. So like at night time I'll be trying to sleep and she's like no I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm still awake, I'm bored, can we just go on Google, can we just do this blah blah blah. And so like sometimes I'll let her win. And it sounds crazy saying this but like yeah. Um, but then the next morning, she tries to get up with six hours sleep and she's like, this is the worst thing ever, I can just sleep, I can't sleep. And um, it's just a constant battle with her. Like, if she would just go to sleep, <laughs> then she'd have enough sleep and then when she woke up early, she wouldn't be like, fuck earliness. But instead, she gets to 5 a.m. And, and logical, motivated, goal-oriented Carl's like, yeah, let's wake up, let's do my yoga, let's, this is this. And the other side of me is like, so I'm in a constant back and forth with my monkey mind and my other side of my mind. And I think there's something that we could all, you know, do to actually like step back. Like I was on YouTube and there was a video I'd seen that almost for me kind of symbolised monkey mind. It was like a video of a dog that decided that its owner wasn't going to make the bed and she was trying to make the bed and no matter what the owner was doing, the dog wouldn't move. Or the dog would move but it would only move on the bed and such. Um, and I wanted to show Adam it and be like, oh, this kind of makes me think of what we're talking about. And then I was trying to find it and I was like, oh, I think it's in my watch list. Oh, I think it's in my history. And it took me freaking ages to find it. And it kind of made me realise like, how much was I slash am I sometimes consuming on YouTube? I think without even realising it has almost like replaced Instagram for me. Like I came off social media a while ago, made a few videos about it. And I think without even realising like your brain fills in for something else. And you know, Adam said the same that you know, he's not on social media in that respect, but he still ends up kind of, you know, just Googling random shit and realizing he's wasting his own time. And it's weird. The brain is a weird thing. Imagine how much society might have advanced if every single person's motivation kept going. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I'm looking forward to doing what I can to move away from the internet like I've you know taken on minimalism I've read books on digital minimalism research and one thing was really interesting actually I saw a talk <laughs> I mean this was on the internet but I'm not saying the internet's all bad 
and it was a video that a girl did about not talking about your creative goals and like initially I thought why wouldn't you want to do that why don't you want to share that with people but almost the overall message was it's not even necessarily creative goals but when we tell someone we're planning on doing something we kind of get all excited and we get interested but quite often we don't then follow through because we already get the like the dopamine hit from being excited and talking about it and being like yeah I'm gonna do this and then it's almost like your brain's like oh, okay well we know what the answer is and we know we don't have to do that right now so don't bother to follow through and it's almost like that I forgot what my point was I'm living on six hours sleep <laughs> I don't know how I'm awake finally remembered after just like 30 seconds going yes okay so I was going to say I've like watched TED talks on like giving up the internet and going about the internet I read articles about it I listened to Digital Minimalism by Cal Newport I think his name was and without realising I was like giving myself all these dopamine hits and this excitement of yeah yeah okay so I know what I could do and I know what the answer is and blah 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 and then wasn't really following through on it. I don't even know if this video will be me eventually following through on it, but I kind of wanted to record my thoughts because sometimes there is nothing more valuable than being able to hear yourself back, like later on down the line. Like sometimes it's great to get advice from different people, but there's been times I've actually watched about my YouTube videos and been like, thank you, past Coral. I've seen you do it. Now I know it could happen. <laughs> so yeah, if you take anything from this video, maybe think about what your own habits are like. Do they fill you? Are there ways that you could do some similar habits but maybe, you know, make them better? Not better, but like, for instance, me using a physical notebook rather than, you know, going on my phone and having a million things to stop me first. Yeah. Caroline's book. Well, what is a screenshot? What is a screenshot? Da -da 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 -da. That's just because every time I end my videos, I realise I forgot to, like, not screenshot, what's it called? Thumbnail. What is a thumbnail? There we go. <laughs> okay, so I already ended this video and put the tripod away, and then my brain was like, you wanted to say this. Uh, so this bit's going to be a bit freehand, as in like, my hand is the tripod. Never way of earning less. No, I'm kidding. Um, yeah, so one of the things I did to try and come away from the internet was I actually like pre-downloaded my YouTube videos and such. I know you could look at that and be like, oh, that's still using the internet and, you know, I have to download them. But it's more about taking away that extra potential monkey mind and that extra distraction because so many times I'd go on YouTube to open my yoga for the day in the morning and then be like oh what's this what's that what's that and before I know it I've not done what I've wanted to do so I've tried to do stuff like that where I've downloaded stuff that is like very definitely what I want to do and um, I think it will just bring like a different kind of focus almost if it's like okay I want to do yoga today I open my laptop, it's already there. There's not like this, that and the other. So that'll be good. We were talking, me and Adam, about, you know, if we almost starve our brain of some of the more indulgent habits that we don't feel actually benefit us, will our brain eventually go, okay, fine, let's just do this then, or do this, like things that you've actually chosen. Like, if I download a guitar lesson, will my brain eventually go, okay, fine, let's do that lesson and such. So we'll see, it's gonna be interesting. I'm gonna try and spend at least, at least the rest of the week, I think, with, that, with very reduced screen time. Like yesterday I had to go on the internet um, because I was like getting some presents for my mum's birthday and there was things we needed from Amazon, but it was good because I wrote in my journal like a list of what I needed to get done. And then I went on the internet and was just like, this is what I'm doing. And when I finish this list, I come off it. And like, even though it still felt like it took long, <laughs> because I was trying to find the right kind of thing for my mom, it was really good how focused it was. Like, I never normally do that. I'll, I'll go on the internet and I might be like, oh, I kind of need to order oat milk. But I'm never just like, right, done. Um, so it's good. 
I saw an article forever ago about a woman who would only use Inchel once a week and again me getting a dopamine hit from it rather than you know actually doing it at the time but hopefully I can put it into practice now and she said that if she had like thoughts of stuff she wanted to google or whatever she would write them down in her notebook and be like oh well, I would actually kind of like to find out this or this or this and then on a Friday like every week it was like okay here's an opportunity to actually like research this stuff sorry I just heard Adam laugh and it's strategy here's an opportunity to like research this stuff and she said a lot of time by the time Friday came around she would look at her list and be like I don't actually care about like most of that stuff but there's so much that we immediately do without even considering it I think because we live in a society now with the internet where we can just get what we want immediately we can be like what's that dog breed called and so on and it's not that this isn't information we should know and it's not that it's not a great thing to learn but it's more questioning how we consume is it done in a way that we're actually going to retain and to like really benefit from and just trying to work out the goodness the goodness anyway my arm is getting tired as a tripod now so i think i'm actually going to end this video <laughs> the irony of having to edit this video on a laptop but there's only so much i can do i can't edit this video in a paper journal